how much of a role are GLP-1 agonists playing in this now? How much more success are you having with treating PCOS that way? Yeah. Yeah, they work really well, just like they work in people with diabetes or people who with obesity without diabetes. Problem is you can't get pregnant while you're taking them, and the current recommendation is to stop for at least two months. So yeah. impor- that's an important message for anybody listening. If yes. you're trying to get pregnant, you should not be on a GLP-1 agonist because we don't understand the impact of that. Right. You can be on it pre-pregnancy, just the recommendation is to stop for at least two months. Okay. Now, having said that, there have been lots of, you may have read about azempic babies, like people getting pregnant on GLP-1. So there is a registry. And so far, to my knowledge, there haven't been um, reported birth defects and that type of thing. But obviously, we're talking about small number of patients at this point. Would you say that every single woman out there with PCOS who wants to get pregnant has access to a doctor that understands what you just described and can do that for her? Or do you worry that too many women are being shunted to IVF too soon without an attempt at something like this? I definitely think there are probably not enough people who totally understand management of PCOS, especially in the context of fertility treatment, uh, for sure. And even in the context of non-infertility treatment, often what I hear from patients is they had irregular periods, somebody told them to start go on the birth control pill, they never told them why, they didn't even know what they had PCOS, right? 